to introduce the next uh, the next talk from uh, Maduri. Maduri is managing partner at Consus Global. Hi, Maduri. How are you? I'm good. You can hear me? Yeah, perfect. Great. So, All right. can you share your screen and, and check if everything is okay for you? Sure. Let's do that. Sound is okay, and uh, I see you, so that's perfect. <laughs> and waiting for your slides. Right, Nicole, your... Just, uh, are you able to see my slides? Yes, I see it. It's perfect. Okay. So, Marie, you can start. You have uh, 20 minutes, and then we will move to Q&A session. All right. Thank you so much, Nicholas. Um, first of all, uh, congratulations, Alex. I do, it was a great session and uh, quite a good deep dive. Uh, I would have a few questions, and uh, probably after my session, I would like to ask you over the chat. So thank you so much. Uh, so Nicholas and uh, the entire API Days team, thank you so much for having me here today. Um, uh, just a quick introduction uh, about myself and uh, Consus Global before we start this, today's topic. Um, so my name is uh, Madhuri Govilkar. I'm managing partner for Consus Global. As uh, many of you already know, Consus is a trusted global supply chain solution provider globally. Uh, we have been working over with 100 over customers all over the globe. And uh, our mission is to streamline supply chain procurement and uh, sourcing while delivering real values, guaranteed uh, ROI, and uh, all the procurement supply chain related benefits. So we have few partnerships uh, for that and uh, in-house uh, incredible uh, brains we have uh, to deliver this year over year uh, for last 11 years uh, you know, to all our customers. Uh, so that's about Consys. And uh, please uh, write to me if you have any questions, if you want to know more about our services, but uh, just at the glance, uh, if you can see here on the screen, uh, these are the uh, this is our portfolio. You know, we have been actually operating out of USA, Canada, UAE, India, Malaysia, Singapore, Philippines. I'm, by the way, based out of uh, Malaysia in Kuala Lumpur. We have been helping customers in supply chain uh, transformation, in creating their roadmaps, and uh, you know, innovate their digital journey. Uh, definitely helping them to implement and integrate. Uh, uh, the source to pay uh, uh, procurement solutions, uh, giving them insight uh, using our strong AI tools uh, for their spend analytics or uh, purchasing uh, analytics, as well as for the data management. Um, and something which is in our DNA, something which we started uh, our business with uh, is the strategic sourcing. And that is something we have been giving uh, you know, most of the customers who have been using uh, our strategic sourcing are getting the guaranteed ROI. Happy to discuss all this um, post our, uh, you know, event today or later anytime you want. So that's about Consus Global. Um, moving to our topic today, uh, which is uh, developing green and circular supply chain. So I think I'm very uh, grateful to API Days for selecting this topic for me. Uh, last couple of years, I mean, even pre-COVID, you know, uh, so many queries have been coming to Consys. We have been helping um, um, so many of our customers uh, with innovative ideas, reaching out uh, to more and more innovative service providers and suppliers who can help them in their green supply chain initiatives or circular supply chain initiatives or altogether, if I say, sustainable supply chain initiatives. So, uh, you know, all these terms, uh, green supply chain, circular supply chain, or sustainable supply chain, they are quite interchangeably used in the market. Um, however, uh, trust me, they are different. They have overlapping benefits. Uh, and I think, um, uh, I hope I can cover uh, some of these uh, uh, important elements and uh, how they are different and uh, yet um, similar. Um, we, we can discuss that in today's session. So I personally believe that before even we see that why do we need 
a change of uh, supply chain, you know, like uh, having a circular supply chain or green supply chain. I think it's very essential for us to see what is going wrong with the linear supply chain or the traditional supply chain. Uh, I think that's the only way we can appreciate uh, these new uh, technologies and the new initiatives uh, better. So are you able to see the screens here? Uh, okay. All right. So um, I'm just showing on my screen right now is the traditional linear supply chain. As you all can see here, uh, there is, uh, you know, the version raw material, which goes to the manufacturer. From there, it goes to the distribution center. From there, it goes to the consumer. And from there, it just goes to the garbage or the landfills. So the simple way to say it, it's take, use, and discard. So that's what actually the linear supply chain do. There is uh, minimal risk, uh, visibility to the consumer that what actually happens in this uh, supply chain. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, definitely they have uh, economical as well as environmental damages. And uh, environmental damages, I think, um, you know, all of us, we already know that, you know, with this kind of, you know, every time when we are extracting, producing, processing raw material, we are polluting water, we are uh, polluting soil, uh, air, all of this. Uh, so there is a lot of, um, you know, uh, greenhouse emissions. And I think 60, 62 percent uh, greenhouse emissions are actually happening as of today because of, you know, this extraction, processing and uh, producing uh, the goods. So definitely it's, uh, you know, a, a bigger damage uh, we all are able to see uh, because of this uh, uh, linear supply chain on the environment. Uh, but there is also a bigger factor, uh, the economical factor, which we also should look into. Uh, so, you know, in that, if I have to discuss the points, what actually affects the economical, uh, what, uh, you know, adds to this damage, is definitely fluctuating um, raw material prices because these raw material prices they do not really uh, they don't really stay at the bigger or the buyer level, but it runs across the market. So when the prices go high, as as you can see, I have taken this um, screenshot from one of the McKinsey papers, and uh, you can see that even though we all are looking at uh, the change, we want circular supply chain, we want green supply chain still the prices for raw material are just increasing year after year so this is this is a greater damage for sure um, the second one is the critical materials i think this can be explained better with the example um, like idioms let's say or um, uh, chromium for that matter you know what uh, have been used or uh, heavily used by um, you know computer industry or uh, automobile industry these materials are available in the in the market uh, at a very less extent, but uh, so it, since there is no alternative to it, uh, these are critical materials, you know, for and it, it has the uh, advert effect on the economy because of that. The third one is um, you know the interdependence. So again, that I think is uh, better to ex uh, explain with an example, uh, as as we all can see that you know the countries who have. Um, oil in abundance, but uh, they have, uh, you know, the, the water shortage. Uh, so these countries are dependent to other countries for grains. So when the oil prices are going up and down, not just, you know, these two commodities are getting affected, but everything else, you know, related to this or many more uh, finished goods in the market are getting affected, um, you know, in the economy. So that's what I mean, uh, being the interdependence. Uh, so that's actually the third factor. And um, increasing material demand. So I think uh, this particular factor has a lot to do with the, uh, the consumer behavior or how we have been as a consumer, how our brains have been or psychologically how we have been trained, you know, like uh, we, we just have this habit of looking for a new product, you know, as soon as there is an iPhone 11 launch, iPhone 12 launch, we just want to go and buy that, uh, regardless that the current uh, product in hand is uh, fully functioning, uh, functioning, right? Uh, so so that's, that's, um, that's a, a user behavior. 
Um, and I think uh, the manufacturing, uh, the overall uh, environment around us, it really affects. Um, and um, I think that is something uh, moving forward. I think, uh, uh, you know, as a consumer level, uh, at the manufacturer level, uh, you know, uh, we all have to think, you know, because when there is a new product, that means there is an increase in material demand automatically. So, you know, this, this, that's the cycle. So all this is definitely affecting uh, the economy. So um, if with the linear supply chain, these are the damages, then uh, I think it is very inevitable that why do we need um, a circular supply chain or a uh, you know, a better supply chain than the linear one. So as you can see here, uh, the the raw material basically, or, uh, you know, from the final destination or from the consumer is getting recycled and reused by the manufacturer. So on theory, if you, if you see this, uh, you will see that 100% uh, raw material basically comes from um, the uh, recycled material and there is absolutely no new version raw material used uh, when you, you are uh, talking about the uh, circular supply chain. So uh, is, it, is it available in the market now? I think uh, I would say the answer is no. Uh, as of today, I think only 9%. I mean, I, I, the, the facts what I'm talking is pre-COVID. I don't even want to talk about uh, what has uh, happened and, you know, how, what this kind of disruption happened because of the COVID uh, on the supply chain. But uh, if I just even take the pre-COVID numbers, then only 9% of uh, uh, material, the raw material was uh, fully recycled. So that's, uh, you know, that less actually the circular supply chain is um, active uh, in the market. Uh, I think uh, it is very important uh, for all of us, for all the companies, uh, governments, consumers, and uh, entire supply chain, for that matter, uh, we all need to discover uh, the various different ways to recycle this uh, material uh, and to reuse it for the manufacturer. So unless and until we discover the ways to do that, I think that the 100% um, circular supply chain is uh, not going to be possible. So that's um, actually uh, the circular supply chain, how it looks like. Uh, the economical, uh, sorry, the environmental advantages are, I think, very obvious. Uh, definitely, you know, there is going to be green, uh, less greenhouse gases or less damage to the environment, to the soil, to the air, to the water. And uh, definitely the nature reserves will be, uh, uh, you know, conserved better compared to the linear supply chain. So these are very obvious advantages. Uh, and from the economical side as well. There are so many benefits that definitely uh, all the companies and all the organizations should be looking at uh, the circular supply chain and you know how they can really uh, figure it out for their organizations. So uh, definitely, uh, you know, when the same material, you know, uh, or the resource is coming back to the supply chain, uh, it is sustainable because you are basically um, cutting or, you know, uh, 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 reducing the dependency on the, the version uh, raw material from the market. Uh, it definitely have the economical growth as, uh, you know, uh, we, we discussed. Uh, and uh, definitely it uh, offers more jobs because what happens actually is uh, uh, with the circular uh, supply chain, uh, you know, the labor is valued more than the raw material. And uh, that definitely shows the incremental uh, labor intensive recycling and high quality repair jobs, uh, logistic jobs to take back, um, you know, the, uh, the local products, the, uh, the repairable products uh, back to the factories for the repair uh, and maintenance. Um, definitely there are gonna be more and more companies coming in the market. Uh, and there are already many companies in the market uh, who are uh, working uh, as a collaboration for multiple different organization, uh, coming up with the innovation ideas, helping companies to uh, improvise their processes or to define the processes for this new supply chain or providing the advisory, some, someone like Consist, you know. So we, uh, so th that's, these are the additional new services or the additional new jobs which are coming in the market because of the circular supply chain. 
change in material demand again because you know psychologically as uh, you know uh, there will be uh, you know the customers will be looking at the uh, long term relationship with also the product what they will be buying there, there is going to be the less wastage there is going to be less raw material uh, the packaging will be innovative and uh, you know uh, lesser packaging compared to uh, what we had earlier so all these factors are definitely going to be having a change material demand so what i the example is um, just uh, like few months back when i bought iphone 12 i i, I noticed that uh, it came just as a small box you know, I mean, earlier, uh, if you notice that, you know, how you get your mobile phone, you get the charging cable, you get all other accessories. And now all I got is just a small box. There was no charging cable, nothing, because I think they have um, understood the uh, the uh, the consumer behavior or the pattern. They know that uh, the previous iPhone uh, consumer is going to buy uh, the, the new iPhone. He would definitely have the cables and all. So there is definitely other lesser raw material going the lesser packaging going uh, into the um, you know as, as a new product so i think uh, small changes uh, can also make a big impact onto the supply chain and the economy so uh, as as the topic i am supposed to talk about the uh, circular as well as the green supply chain and i personally believe that uh, if i am not talking about the sustainable supply chain then I uh, would not be able to fully uh, able to explain or to introduce what is the green supply chains, right? So as a, a sustainable supply chain, uh, I think they, it, it basically has three pillars, you know, the three bottom lines. One is the environmental or the green. The second one is uh, the social. And the third one is the governance. So, you know, in nutshell, if we have to, uh, uh, you know, talk about uh, the sustainable supply chain, then it's basically, um, you know, without basically compromising the ability of a future generation to meet their own needs, creating a today's or present supply chain, right? So I think these three pillars are very, very important. And uh, all these three bottom lines work together to build the sustainable supply chain. So even while we will be discussing about the green supply chain today, I think um, I, I think we all need to make a note that uh, just having the environmental, um, uh, you know, enhancement or the green uh, initiative is not just going to be enough because unless and until we are been taking care of the uh, the equal pay, um, you know, the human rights, uh, uh, you know, the product responsibility, child labors, and uh, you know, the business ethics, compliances, and uh, you know, the shareholder democracy. So many many different factors are there. And all this uh, need to, they are interlaced together. So unless and until they all are being worked upon, I think we would not be able to see, uh, a, you know, uh, a better sustainable supply chain in the market. So, all right. So going towards uh, the green supply chain now. So uh, this is the first pillar of your sustainable supply chain, right? So the green, uh, the good news compared to the circular supply chain, as I said, that, you know, it is still not yet there. For the green supply chain, I think the good news is uh, it is doable. You know, it's about just uh, taking the initiative from the top management, carving out the budget for it and um, taking uh, and making the processes around that is uh, absolutely possible. So green supply chain, as the, you know, the term says itself, is actually... Um, inducing or including the process, uh, uh, the green process during the product design, material sourcing, selection, manufacturing, production, operation, and even, you know, when it, as an end of product as well, right? Or end of life uh, product as well. So that's what is the, uh, the green supply chain um, management. So I, uh, the next one, which I would like to, you know, uh, would like to talk about is why developing this green and um, circular supply chain is so important, right? So I think we have seen the advantages and disadvantages of how it affects the environment, how it affects the economy. Uh, but um, it, it, it matters more than that uh, because, uh, you know, as um, in the face of increasing scandals around the world concerning corporate ethics and uh, corporate governances, many governments, you know, across the globe have actually responded with a greater oversight 
and uh, uh, you know the government activities uh, so these are actually uh, becoming mandatory and for most of the companies so most of the um, multinational companies as of today are struggling and striving to become the forerunner on the world stage by becoming or coming up with the holistic um, sustainable uh, strategies to comply with international principles and the standards so definitely it's very very important uh, increasing profitability uh, is the second element to it um, i think we already discussed that uh, you know since it's uh, uh, you know uh, helping you with the sustainable material definitely that point itself uh, talks a lot about how we are increasing the profitability uh, but apart from that, uh, you know, it also shows uh, at various different levels because you are ensuring a safer working environment. You are uh, talking about the lean production. Uh, we are talking about the quality management, um, you know, uh, optimized inventory uh, and optimized uh, or smart warehousing. So all these factors are uh, also adding up uh, to your increased profitability, right? Thank you. Uh, uh, hey, Ajri, yes. Ajri, Ajri, excuse me, just uh, there is two minutes left. And okay. we have QA. So if you want to, to finish your presentation and then we move to okay. the QA. Perfect. Thanks, Nicholas, for the reminder on that. So um, I, I will just wrap this up very quickly because I, I just thought along, you know, when we just talk about the green or sustainable or the circular supply chain, I think these these factors are equally important. Uh, so the other two factors are building the positive image uh, as you know the growing supply uh, the consumer demands around uh, you know all this green product uh, where actually after the product uh, at the end of uh, cycle where it is going all these things matter so much to the consumer uh, i think it is very very important for the manufacturer to think about this positive brand imaging right now and uh, the last point is actually the corporate innovation because you know so much positivity is uh, happening because you know on these points there is profitability uh, you know the uh, the labor laws many things are adding up um, you know uh, uh, for um, you know employees as well that uh, from the top management i think it's the perfect opportunity for all of them to think about the innovative ideas to look into the new product line new services to enhance their businesses at the same time okay so uh, yeah nicholas Thanks a lot, Madhuri. Uh, so maybe I can ask you one question now? Yes, please go ahead. OK, so you, you talk about iPhone devices, uh, <laughs> and you talk about yeah. recycling for manufacturers. But yes. we know that recycling for, uh, let's say, uh, consumer equi equipment like smartphone are quite difficult. Um, so do you see some trend uh, to repairable smartphones? <laughs> is it is it uh, like a question coming from the love of iphone <laughs> okay okay uh, actually nicholas is a good point um i actually have uh, found a amazing uh, case study by apple it's publicly available uh, i have downloaded that copy i can pass it on to you so, um, you know, uh, not just Apple, but all these, um, you know, companies, uh, electronic companies, I think uh, they have been looking at harvesting the metal parts, uh, which are the discarded metal parts, you know, coming, uh, taking back the old phones, uh, the old accessories, uh, because, you know, that uh, actually leads to the less harm to the environment and increases their uh, profitability. So, yes, actually iPhone or Apple is actively working on that. Um, and the other thing, you know, I think we all can see, you know, the wireless charging, right? So that's that's a green initiative. I mean, we we had the the charges earlier we uh, we were using, and now we are just charging it uh, wireless. So there there is a change, which is very visible change, you know, from the bigger organizations. Okay. 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 Thank you, Madhuri. Let me check the Q and A. For the question, and we are. Let's say in time. So thank you, Madhuri. Uh, do you have anything to uh, to add, or is it okay for you? I do have a few case studies, Nicholas. I would like to pass it on to you um, because, um, as I said, we have been helping our customers, existing customers, and helping them with their green initiative. 
Uh, just a quick one line here because we don't have much time right now. Uh, for one of our hospitality customer uh, in Southeast Asia, we have uh, helped them to uh, replace, you know, their plastic bottle uh, 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 for their hotels with the glass bottles. And uh, with that, in five years, they would have actually collected as much as 80 basketball court size plastic. And now they are, they have actually, uh, you know, uh, with the new initiative, uh, they have their own uh, drinking and uh, uh, cooking water plant uh, and the glass bottle. So, you know, it's a, it's a fantastic initiative. So we right. help them to upgrade right. the suppliers and uh, helping them to build this. Okay. Thank you, Madhuri. So I hesitate to add things into the chat on Open. Sure. And uh, thank you for your presentation and for your time. Thank you, Madhuri. Thank you, Nicholas. Thank